Here are four do's and four don'ts of freight broker insurance coverage. Welcome to my channel. My name is Shikama. Before you make any decision about insuring your business or changing your courage, I urge you to speak with your own insurance agent and possibly your accountant, attorney as well. That said, here are a few do's and don'ts that apply generally to the major insurance products that are offered to freight brokers and 3PLs. Here are the do's. Property and general liability. If you own or lease property, you can buy property insurance. It's usually best to package it with general liability insurance for your premises and operations. Ask your insurance agent for coverage recommendation and quotes. Vicarious auto liability and umbrella. Brokers need vicarious auto liability insurance. If you are named in a lawsuit, as in recent negligent hiring cases, your insurer will be in a position to defend you. If you are found liable, a vicarious auto liability will cover you. Be very careful to review the terms and conditions because the policy is offered very widely. Some provide very little coverage and some are very broad. They are not all the same. You can also buy an umbrella policy which will allow you to increase your liability limits. Umbrellas are available in $1 million increments. Workers' compensation. If you have employees, particularly if you have two or more, every state requires you have workers' compensation insurance. You should also check to be sure the carrier has workers' compensation insurance. We have a case pending right now where a broker is being pursued by a driver for workers' compensation benefits because the trucking company was not covered. If the carrier is not required by the state to have workers' comp, then the broker needs to get a written statement from the carrier to that effect and keep it on file. Contingent cargo. You don't know what the carrier's policy covers and it doesn't cover, so your contingent cargo can fill some of the gaps that a carrier's policy might have. Be aware that contingent cargo insurance policies are not all the same. Pay special attention to the basis of coverage. Is it a legal liability? As a broker, you are not legally liable for cargo loss and damage claims. Check all the policy details with your insurance agent and your attorney as needed before you sign. And finally, errors and omissions. Some claims are not covered under any other policy. For example, if a broker gives the wrong information to a carrier by mistake, the broker could be considered negligent. That type of claim can be covered by errors, omissions, E&O, insurance. Note that E&O coverage will not pay for 1. bodily injury, 2. property damage. If the E&O is part of your contingent cargo policy, however, cargo damage may be covered. That being said, here are the don'ts. Don't waste your time or money on these. Excess auto liability. Freight brokers often ask whether they can buy auto liability coverage to bridge the gap between the shipper's requirement and the carrier's limits. For example, the shipper wants a $2 million in auto liability by the carrier, but the carrier only has $1 million. My advice, don't even think about it. A broker can not buy insurance for the benefit of the carrier or the shipper. Each company can only insure its own liability exposure. So if the shipper says, this is the insurance level we want, you must find a carrier who fulfills the requirement. Name as additional insured by carrier. There are four kinds of carrier's policies, but only one where you can be named as additional insured. One, auto liability. It's not necessary to be an additional insured. The MCS 90 endorsement and the omission I'm sorry, the Omnibus Insuring Agreement on all interstate carriers, liability policies automatically include the broker and the shipper as insureds. Two, general liability. Additionally, insured status is important for GL, but getting named on all carrier policies with, will be a huge challenge. There are very few GL claims in transportation. Three, cargo insurance. Cargo policies almost always exclude, do not cover, any property owned by an insured. If the shipper is an additional insured, the coverage has been voided. Additional insured status for a broker or the trucker's cargo policy is of no value because the trucker policy insured of the carrier's li legal liability as a carrier. A broker is not a carrier, so there is no benefit. Four, workers' comp. 
It is impossible in all states and illegal in most states for any company to be an additional insured on any uh, one's uh, workers' compensation policy. Moving on, carrier supplied insurance certificates. We recommend that brokers verify the carrier certificate of insured, but do not rely on a copy from the carrier. The carrier can send you an outdated certificate. And there is no way that you know. Go directly to the insurance agent or subscribe to an electronic certificate service such as eTranscore Carrier Watch. We recommend electronic certificates for, for clients because the service is convenient, up to date, and your due diligence can be verified in case of a claim. Relying on the M, uh, FMCSA for insurance data. On the FMCSA site, you can verify the status of a carrier's liability insurance along with the policy effective date and whether it's about to be canceled. For their own protection, insurance company will post cancellations in the, on the F, FMCSA website. Reinstatement data are not as reliable. On cargo insurance, however, you can get little or no information because carriers are no longer required to file evidence of cargo insurance. For complete insurance data, go directly to the insurance agent or subscribe to a carrier validation and monitoring service such as Carrier Watch. Finally, incomplete carrier qualification. Develop a carrier qualification procedure. We recommend that the TIA framework as a guideline and follow it every time you choose a carrier. Keep written records. The worst thing you can do is to have a procedure and then not follow it. If there is a negligence claim, it is very hard to defend your company when your own people don't follow an establishment procedure. And thank you. Please leave all comments below. If you have other, I will be covering some more insurance information, especially around this time of year. And I will be doing some tax information. If you want to see tax information, leave a comment below. If you want to see more insurance information, leave a comment below. If you're even if you're on your phone, like the video so that uh, more people can see it. Thank you.